uh, I, I didn't want to leave the, a wrong impression of them when we got into a friendly wrangle. I hope it was friendly, right? About, <laughs> about philosophical stuff. But I didn't mean to imply that I think that rational thought or intellectual thought is the most important thing. I think it's the least important, probably, in the long mm -hmm. run. You've got to learn all that stuff, and then you've got to put it out of your mind when you're improvising. It becomes mm -hmm. automatic. Mm -hmm. Because the best stuff comes from the instincts and the unconscious. And mm -hmm. uh, the learned, the acquired knowledge, uh, and the harmony, you know, you've got to know all that inside and out. But your best, your real playing has to be unconscious. Mm -hmm. But you have to learn everything first, mm -hmm. or else, you know, to, to have a base to mm -hmm. work from. But I don't mean to say I believe in rational playing in any sense, because anything that I can figure out is not as good as what I can improvise if I'm really going. Mm -hmm. It's more subtle, you know? That's yeah. why I can't, I have trouble writing, because only the greatest composers can do that, where they can actually write down things so they sound like they were... Uh, almost improvised, except they're yeah. like Beethoven. He constructs things that are so perfect that you couldn't change a note, and yet they have an air about them as though they were improvised. Mm -hmm. And that I don't see how he does, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. because I can get that feeling on my best improvisations, but of course they're still improvisations, and they're not developed in the sense that his stuff is. But that, that intuitive thing, I guess a great composer gets that the way we get it with improvising, finally. But I don't believe that figuring is, or calculating, or rational thought is the, uh, you cannot figure how to play a good solo. That's unquestionably not so, in my mind. Uh, uh, Jimmy, let me ask you a question. Well, what do you think happens, and I know, I know this has happened to you probably a lot, uh, when, you, when you practice and you're ready for the gig and you go and play with two or three other musicians, and, and you reach a certain spot on certain tunes, or maybe just one tune, where for maybe two majors or four majors or maybe eight, when all of a sudden you're doing something that you know you've never practiced and it's, and it's purely spontaneous and you get that lift and then when it's over, you might go back to the cassette if you recorded it and play that section a couple times, you know, and then maybe you try to do it and it's almost like you can't, you can't execute it that way. Uh, what happens at that point? Uh, do you know, you know what I'm talking about? Well, that's the thing that we're all in the game I, for, I, I think. I know. <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's the moment of pleasure. I mean, we just, I don't make very much money out of it, so that moment of, I think I wrote this one time on an album note, that you, you take all your experience, you take all of your knowledge, and then you forget it and play, and you, once in a while you reach a moment of elation when it, the notes come out, and you seem to be standing as a bystander and watching it, and you have no <laughs> exactly. control over it. And that moment is like dope. Once you've really mm -hmm. felt that good about playing, you're hooked, you always want to mm -hmm. feel that again and you go back to it for that reason. A lot, most of the time it's kind of you're working at it because you can't quite get it, but uh, those moments are, I guess, some kind of moments of inspiration. I mean, peak, yeah. Maslow calls that a peak experience. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. It's some, you're in some way, you're in complete connection with the music mm -hmm. and you don't have any physical, you're not controlling it, it's controlling you in a sense, and it's your inner, self or your unconscious is controlling it. Mm -hmm. But it's still, if you listen to it later, it's very rational. Mm -hmm. You're still, your rational mind it still it. forms it and holds it in place, but you're not conscious. It's coming from the unconscious. It's directed by the unconscious the spirit of your, or whatever you want to call it. And that's really when you're playing your best, I think. Let, me, let me ask you a question in, in relation to that, two questions. Do you think that it may be that moment the ego steps aside or s the ego, yeah, the ego steps aside. And the other question is, do the other members of the group have something to do with allowing you to reach that peak experience, which in essence, like you said, we seem to be the performer, but we're standing aside and watching us play the several measures of uh, elation, like you said, or bliss or whatever, you know, and then you try to get it the next time. As a matter of fact, you might call that tune the next night, hoping that that same thing is going to happen mm -hmm. in the same place. Uh, do you think it has anything to do with maybe the ego stepping aside, and what part do the other musicians play that you're playing with? Or do they have any? Oh, I don't know. The ego is a Freudian division, which I guess we all accept to one degree or another, but I, I think the rational... You're, when you're improvising, I don't really think anyone can think as fast as we play in the usual sense 
Uh, so a certain amount of it are modules to use a, a, some of the uh, computer jargon, which I hate to use, but they're hooked together in little hunks or quanta. Uh, there, I got it in. The word quanta, which means package. Or, um, so they're hooked together in a certain sense. So you can spin them off automatically, but what you do with them as you loop them up into something and make something out of them is something that happens like a juggler, you know? You're playing with things and something happens and it balances and it all works out. And somehow you lose control over your rational control. You're just doing it. When it really gets good, I don't know, what am I doing? What am I going there for? You know, I don't even, I'm following it. I can't keep up with my fingers, which means my, my unconscious mind is way ahead of my conscious mind. And uh, that doesn't mean there's not a mental process. Of course there is. A much more subtle mental process is going on than your rational. That's, conscious. that's the that's the point I was trying to make before. Your unconscious musical mind, uh, or your, your unconscious mind, is much more uh, subtle. Do you know what the story about who who uh, first put the um, the ring together, the carbon ring? What was his name? The, they'd never been able to decide how the carbon atom was constructed, and he was on it, and he thought about it and thought about it, thought about it, thought about. It. And a, phys early, a physicist, you know, uh, they didn't Feldstein call them. Feldstein or something. It like was that. far back, yeah. uh, several hundred years. And first put together the carbon atom, the shape of it, you know. And he was working on it, working on it, been working on it for so long. Well, he was putting in all his knowledge, but all of a sudden he fell asleep in a railway car and he saw these snakes with their tails in each other's mouth to tail, mouth to tail. Farming, farming this eight sided and he had it. He mm -hmm. woke up and he had it. But of course, it takes someone who spent their life understanding right. this, and then for that. But the moment of inspiration was unconscious, and that happens all the time with creative people in physics or in painting or in music or in writing. Uh, but they're prepared for these right. discoveries. You see, Jimmy, thanks a lot. I'm getting a signal that we're going to have to wind this up for another session coming up here. I want to thank both. Jamie Abersall and Jimmy Rainey for not only for this interview but for coming to Swing into Spring Jazz Festival today. Yeah, thank you. And uh, we'll send you a copy of this. I appreciate it, John. Incidentally, I, I hope this proves that jazz musicians are candid. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank and you. And verbose. <laughs>